today we are talking about overwhelm, just being completely overwhelmed in business. And I'm sure that there are times and moments in your life when you just have so many things to do, so much stuff on your list, you're feeling absolutely overwhelmed, it's creating anxiety, and you just want to jump in the bed, bury your head, and give up until the next day. Well, let me give you my three keys to overcoming all of that so that you can actually stay in the game and keep it moving and keep your head up and stay motivated. Let's get to work. For me, there are really three pillars that I utilize when I am trying to overcome that feeling of overwhelm. And honestly, I probably feel overwhelmed every day a little bit. There are so many things going on in my head um, all the time and trying to make sure that I am serving you guys and um, really you know, being able to actually grow my business. It does take some time and take some planning to actually overcome that overwhelmed feeling and to ultimately prevent burnout. But what I found is that it really does get summed up into my three pillars. And there are several moving parts though, but they can really be reduced down to these three things. Managing yourself, managing others, and managing things. So I want to break this down really simply for you so you can really understand and give you some tips under each of those three pillars. Managing yourself. This is a biggie, but it's also the very first pillar. If you can't control yourself, you are not going to be able to control anything around you. It's a movie. I'm only going to say this one more time, sir. Calm down. I'm calm! And sometimes this is the hardest thing for people that I know, for business owners, for entrepreneurs, for my students, for my coaches, because it really does require a lot of discipline. And believe it or not, discipline is one of the hardest things that we as human beings have to really wrap our arms around. It takes discipline to really get anywhere in life. And we all know that there are times when we are weak and we're just not disciplined enough to get it done. So managing yourself really can be summed up into these specific things that I want you to employ and that I actually employ when I am trying to overcome that feeling and that anxiety of the business overwhelm. First, in managing yourself, you've got to put the tools and the systems in place. You are never going to get a good grip on trying to figure things out and control and give yourself that discipline unless you've got tools and systems. And that, I mean, I'm very big on processes. Everybody out there who knows, knows that I'm huge on them. And I'm actually going to link um, something up here somewhere in the cards for you because I actually do start talking about how do you create the processes for your business. If you don't have a step-by-step -step thing that you can do over and over, what you'll find yourself doing is just kind of wasting time, searching, um, being inefficient with things. So there are lots of tools and systems that I recommend and something simple like when you know that you're going to send an email message out and it's kind of a recurring email that you kind of respond to um, the same types of support questions or customer service questions or sales questions that you get, then why not create a document that actually has those responses already in them? And all you've got to do is kind of copy and paste and tweak a little bit. If you've got to start from scratch and reinvent the wheel every single time you're doing something, you are going to feel very overwhelmed because it's like you're starting new. So when it becomes a habit and when you've got a system or a process in place, it's going to be easy peasy. And it's really key to really being able to kind of manage yourself, to keep yourself disciplined and to keep yourself with that focus. The second thing that I like to do in managing yourself is to keep in mind that it is very important to have a work-life balance. Yes, I'm a firm believer in working hard, but playing hard. And that work-life balance hasn't always been something that I've been really good at doing. Um, I tell myself all the time that I've got to get better at it. And in the beginning of my career, I really sucked. I mean, it got to a point where my family had kind of an intervention and my kids and my husband were like, you got to pick 
a couple of days a week that you can work long, crazy hours, and the other days is all about us. You have to have some balance. And trust me, if you don't really establish that work-life balance, you are always going to feel overwhelmed. You're going to begin to resent what you're doing every single day, and you're actually going to put your health at risk. I can remember times where I was actually so sick that I was put in the hospital because I allowed myself to be unmanaged, honestly. So making sure that you make time for work-life balance, to have some fun, go out for happy hour. You guys know how I feel about happy hour and it's kind of a weekly thing for me enjoy yourself to have some girls nights go out with your significant other definitely make sure that you're getting rest cut it off all of those things to help you with that work-life balance is going to mitigate that overwhelm that being a business owner will ultimately bring sometimes and the third real key point in my managing yourself pillar is taking care of yourself. Your health is going to be really, really important in this whole growing your business thing, don't you think? So if you're not taking care of yourself purposefully, you are not going to get anywhere anyway. And so when you're sick, when you're exhausted, when you just can't think and focus and you're not eating well, you're not getting enough rest, it really does affect your productivity and your efficiency. So a huge part of managing yourself is taking good care of yourself. Eat well, do some meal prep. Don't just, you know, um, live off of unhealthy snacks, even though you're working really hard because it will create brain fog. It will prevent you from being able to focus. And ultimately it really is a sign that you're not taking good care of yourself, which means you can't really manage yourself either. Pillar number two in really overcoming that business overwhelm is managing others. And when I say managing others, I don't necessarily mean you kind of marching along and, you know, marching and telling people what to do and being all bossy. I'm bossy. I'm the first girl to scream on the track. I switched up the beat. I mean, giving boundaries, um, setting time limits, making sure that you begin to train the people in your life around exactly what you need in order to manage the overwhelm. I started out by saying, like, for instance, set boundaries. And it was something that I had to employ early on in my business. When you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner, sometimes your friends and your family can ultimately assume that you've got all the free time in the world to handle whatever it is that they need you to handle. And and it was required of me very early on to begin to train my family and set boundaries. So if my mom wanted me because she worked, uh, you know, she had an off day during the week and I knew that that was a busy time for me and she got in the habit of calling me 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock and I was always answering the phone, then it was kind of training her that it's okay to interrupt my day to, you know, break my focus and which ultimately then creates some overwhelm for me. So I had to actually begin to say to myself, you know, you got to train folks. So 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, personal phone calls come in. I don't answer them. And after a while, people start to say, well, you don't answer my calls. And then I can respond with, yeah, I answer your calls as long as you're not calling me when I'm working because I wouldn't call your job and disrespect you like that. So don't interrupt my day, right? So setting those boundaries and training people on when you can actually have that time, when you can take those breaks, when they can actually communicate with you is critical in managing that overwhelm and ultimately managing others. The second tip under managing others that I like to give is to set time limits. And that means that when you are in a meeting with someone or when you're in a discussion with someone, set that time limit and stick to it. Perfect example. Just the other day, I had a pick your brain coffee meeting and it showed up in my calendar. I wasn't really sure what it was about or what the significance was with whom I was meeting with. And um, so one of the things that I've learned over time is when an appointment like that shows up in my calendar and it's not ultimately going to be related to having impact, serving my customer or client, or giving me an opportunity to grow the revenue of my business, I will actually set an alarm on my phone and give it exactly the amount of time that it's in my schedule for. So this coffee meeting happened to be set in my schedule for an hour. And before I went in, because I wasn't really sure the significance and if it was just one of those like, you know, random Cheryl, I want to meet with you and catch up type of a thing. So I set my alarm to, to alert me at four o'clock. I said one hour from now, go off. And when that alarm went off, it was very easy for me to grab it. It actually was a huge cue to the person sitting across from me that I was about to be up and out of that meeting. Huh? 
That's it. I'm out of here. And it set that time limit and let them know Cheryl's time is valuable, so don't just be sitting here shooting the shit and trying to move forward through some random conversation. So set a time limit and stick to it. Use all the tools and systems that you have to make sure that you are sticking to that time frame. And it's going to help you ultimately manage others and train them, but ultimately impact that business overwhelm that you feel. So pillar number three for me and really learning how to overcome that overwhelming feeling that just wants to drive you to quitting is managing your things. And we all are surrounded by a ton of things. And a lot of those things can be very, very distracting and kind of send you off into di different thoughts. You know, it's kind of like squirrel, you know? So ultimately, those things are really important to manage. And I've got various steps that I utilize in my life in order to be able to impact those things. My first tip on managing things is clear the clutter. Now, that is something really, really hard for a lot of people to do and to absorb, but you know what I'm talking about. If your space and your energy is completely cluttered, your mind will be cluttered and your actions and outputs will be cluttered. If you are anything like me, I sleep much better when my bedroom is organized and clean, right? I sit and veg out on my couch much better when my living room is organized and clean. It just eliminates that feeling that you have that says, I've got something I've got to do in order to fix something. And if you're surrounded by clutter and paper and files and stuff, it's going to create that feeling naturally in you, even if it's not warranted. And ultimately, you're going to be overwhelmed by it. So take an opportunity every single week to just clear the clutter. That clutter clearing is going to actually open up the universe to let you know it's clear. Come on in. Give me my good stuff. My second tip under managing things is manage your time. You know, one of the questions that I like to ask all of my students and all of my coaches is, do you manage your time or does your time manage you? There is a very distinct difference between the two. If you let distractions and emails and phone calls dictate what you are doing next, then your time is managing you. If you, however, are a master of managing your time, you're going to dictate what you do, what you respond to, what impacts your focus from minute to minute. And in order to be successful in entrepreneurship and ultimately in life and eliminating overwhelm, you have got to be the master of your own time. So when I say manage your time, I mean prioritize prioritizing effectively. Not everything can have a priority in your life, in your mind, or in your actions. So you really do have to take an opportunity to take a deep breath and really map it out. What's first, what's second, what's third, and then stick to that and do what's first, what's second, and what's third. Also, you have to eliminate distractions. And nowadays, we have so many distractions. I read something once that actually said, the average human being is distracted by social media, our phones, all the time technology that we have like every 12 minutes, but scientifically it takes us 25 minutes to regain our focus. So when you think about that stat, you're kind of thinking, am I ever really able to focus? Yeah, but only if you manage those distractions and eliminate them. You have to train yourself with the discipline to not allow your phone and your texts and your social media dings and your emails distract you from getting what you need to get accomplished. Because ultimately, if you stay in that state of constantly allowing distractions to overwhelm you, then you will constantly be in a general state of overwhelm and you won't last very long. And my last little tip under managing time that I like to do is, and I've said this before, you guys have heard me say it a million times, um, block scheduling. That is so important. I literally live by block schedules and because I have other people actually plugging things into my calendar for me with my assistant, um, I have to make sure that I take a look at my calendar first and I block time off. I've got certain blocks of time where I focus on content creation so that I can bring you guys CPTV. 
and all the stuff that you get from my newsletters and the opt-ins and all the freebies and all that kind of stuff. I have to block that time off. I've also got time blocked in my calendar every single month for recording the videos or for creating other content. I've got time blocked off in my calendar every week for my coaching strategy calls and ultimately for my coaching calls. And then I've got time blocked off in my schedule that says, all right, these are for outside meetings, um, for board meetings and things like that. So you have to really block your time. And I guess putting it on the calendar doesn't really matter if you don't actually do what's in that block. So that goes back to obviously does your time manage you or do you manage your time? But if you do work in block scheduling, it allows you to not be all over the place every single day at every single moment. Because in order to focus, you really need to be doing the same thing, like I said, consistently for at least 25 minutes in order to really get a good job in. So blocking your schedule off is a great tip for that. So my love, Everything that we just talked about takes some time, takes some training, um, and it takes you know some effort to really implement. But if you take these tips and you give yourself the next 30 days to really do what I'm saying, you will be surprised at how much time you save and how much overwhelm you actually eliminate. I'm telling you that the most successful entrepreneurs and people in this world have the ability to eliminate overwhelm and get control of the millions of things that they have to do on a daily basis. If you can't do that, then success is going to be even further away than you want. So take these steps and trust me, at the end of it, that peace will overcome you and no matter how much more you need to do, you'll be able to manage it very well. So if you like this, don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button for me. Um, definitely share this with your friends, hit that notification button so that you'll know every single time a CPTV episode comes your way. And thank you guys so much. I am looking forward to seeing you again next time. Mwah!